What's up y'all, Riley here. And as many of you know, Hannah and I just picked up a new Scout Campers for our truck. Um, because of that, we've lost use of our backup camera, our 360 view camera, and that kind of functionality because our tailgate is down. At the same time, I have no rearward visibility because this camper blocks the rear view mirror. So I'm installing a new camera so that I can see behind me when we're backing up, switching lanes on the highway, and get that 360 camera view back. I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. I don't want to drill into the Scout, so this might be a little different. If you find yourself in a similar situation, um, this might help you, whether you have a Scout camper or a four-wheel camper or something else. So let's get into it. First things first, it's important to note that this is a 2022 Ford F-250. It has Sync 4, the 12-inch screen, and the Pro trailer package which gives you the 360 cameras. I mention this because these trucks come in a lot of different forms and if you have a system that is different than the one that I just mentioned you might need a different camera and this solution might not work for you. However the install that I'm doing is relatively universal so all you're gonna have to do is figure out which camera works with your truck and the rest of it should be the same. The first thing that I have here is a relocation kit from Rostra. There are a couple companies that make these type of relocation kits. Um, just find the one that fits your model year. And I'll open this up in a second and show you what's in it. The second thing I have is the camera. So this is a camera directly from Ford. So it's OE. The one that I needed for my truck that I just described to you is this part number. This is important because there are two different types of cameras, one that works for the 360 system and one that doesn't, and they have different connectors. So I'll show you what this looks like so that you can be sure you're getting the right one. Also show you the cable that goes to it. So this is the camera for your Ford Super Duty if you have the 360 camera. And you can see it's a single plug. It should look like this. The other one has a wider connector. This one has a small round connector. Inside this box, we have the relocation bracket or housing, I guess you could call it. it comes in two parts. This is what adheres to the surface. You can also use self-tapping screws that are included. And then this nests on top of it once your camera is installed and looks like so. So it'll angle down at the appropriate angle. You have some hardware, so you have some self-tapping screws as well as screws to hold this unit together once the camera's in. You have your instruction manual. We don't need that, we're men. And then you have your wiring harness. It's important to get the right length, so try to estimate how far you're going to need to run this cable. Um, this one works for my needs, as you'll see, but you might need one that's a little longer. It should have the same fittings on both sides. As you can see, plugs right into the camera, and then the other side will plug into your truck, which I will show you. So here's the camper and what we're working with. And with the help of my wife, let me pop up here real quick. We determined that going right below this center brake light up high was the best route for us because we plan to leave the tailgate on for the time being to use as a step using the built-in step that comes with the Ford and <laughs> finally found a use for it um, and have a nice little place to put our shoes and all that stuff. The issue is I don't want to drill into the Scout and as you can see with the housing this little square hole is where your wiring is supposed to come out. So if it sits flush against the camper, you would have to drill that hole, run the wiring through the hole so that it's hidden. Instead of doing that, I'm going to modify this unit so that the wiring can come through the side and I can simply run the cable down and into the housing that way. In theory, you could disassemble this little plug, pull the wire out, and that way you can make your hole smaller. You could reassemble this once the wiring is through. I'm not gonna do that because I don't think it's that big of a deal. These connectors are waterproofed anyway. There's little gaskets in there. 
and so I don't really have much concern over water intrusion into the housing. I'll just drill a small hole in the bottom to help get rid of any water that does enter. And uh, if I need to, I'll just pop that open every once in a while and clean it out. So I'm gonna drill a hole that's big enough for this to pass through. I realize that's a pretty significant hole, but I think it's the best route for me. Before you drill the hole, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are drilling on the side where you want the cable to come out. So because I'm running the wiring through the left side of the camper, I'm going to drill on the left side. That way it can just come out this way. You also wanna start with a really small drill bit. It's pretty warm here in Oregon right now, but I, I still don't want to risk um, breaking this housing in any way. So I'm gonna start really small, work my way up. I'm gonna want my cable to come through right about there. There's a little bit of play here, so you do have some opportunity to adjust. The camera sits there. So I'm thinking dead middle should work pretty well. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but we are just gonna work with what we have and uh, deal with it. Also wanna make sure you don't hit either of these threaded posts. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so there's our start. Got to do that a couple more times and we will be good to get this camera installed. So I didn't have the exact right size bit, but with a little bit of wallowing out, a little bit of work, this harness does slip right through. And I may fill this in with a little bit of silicone or something, but I'm pretty happy with it. And I uh, will make sure that this doesn't chafe that harness at all. So now I'm gonna go get this in position, make sure that I'm happy with where it's placed and then uh, run the wiring in, get the camera in, and um, get everything set up to finalize. Once you've determined your mounting location and tried to make sure that it's as level as possible, you're gonna wanna wipe down the area that the housing will be adhering to with an alcohol prep pad, just to maximize how well that adhesive works. Um, as a note, they recommend the center line of the vehicle, of course, as the ideal place to mount your relocation. Um, they also recommend at least 48 inches above the ground. Ideally, the same place that the factory camera was or above it. You don't really wanna go below it. There are license plate brackets that some people use, but ideally you wanna mount above the factory location. I've got my housing installed directly under this middle brake light. I'm just using the adhesive for now. Um, if I need to, I'll go back and add the screws because as you can see, you can remove the cover and insert your screws at a later date. So I'm going to run this cord and get this as if I'm going to finalize it, but I'm not going to tape down the cable yet because I want to ensure that my placement is right and that everything is looking good. I've gone ahead and loosely mounted the camera up there in position. I did not um, put all the screws all the way in, but just want to be able to test this. And I'm gonna pop underneath the truck real quick to show you where you can find the harness for this camera. So you're gonna to wanna to pop under the driver's side, under the bumper. You'll see these two harnesses. These are not what we're dealing with right now. You're gonna to go to the other side of this bracket and by the spare tire, you'll see a cluster of wiring. You're gonna look for this brown one. You're gonna disconnect it and plug in your new harness. All right, let's see how we did. Let's hit this camera button. There is our 360 view. You can see that we have that back. It's a little funky looking, but it's there. 
And then let's go to our backup camera. There you go. So we can see our tailgate, our step is out, and this should help us back up without any issues. So it's in a good spot, it's working. Now we just gotta finalize this project. Okay, all our screws are in, so this is good to go. I'm going to use Gorilla Tape right now because we were on the road and I was unable to get any uh, channel or wire hider. Um, so in the future I will do all this a little bit cleaner with a wire hider. For now though, I'm just gonna use this black Gorilla Tape, run it along the door frame and route it down to the right location. So there you go, I used the tape. You can tell it's tape, but it's temporary. And we feed it all the way down, wrap around this corner, and then we're going between the bed and the tailgate. Now I'm just gonna head under there, use some little zip ties, and make sure that this cable stays where it needs to stay. So you can see the, you can see the wiring dropping down through the tailgate. I'm running it through this hole zip tied the extra cordage, extra wiring to the frame right here, and then run up and plug it in. And then I'm gonna put some electrical tape over the empty plug, and we're done. That's a wrap on this project. The camera's ready to use, we're ready to go on some adventures, and I hope that this video helped you if you are in a similar situation where you need to relocate or add a camera to your rig um, to help you navigate those downtown streets or those tight trails. I know that <laughs> I do, and Hannah certainly appreciates it as well. Um, if you found this useful, drop a comment below. Be sure to subscribe and follow along for more adventure and camping content.